Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about arithmetic and the difference between integer division and floating point division in C++. So let's go ahead and get started. And you're going to find that in C++ you've got your standard arithmetic operators that you're used to. So you've got a plus for addition. You've got a minus for subtraction. You've got a asterisk to represent multiplication, multiplication, and you've got a forward slash for division, and you've got percent for modulus division. So more on that in a second, but first let's look at some examples. So let us say that I created a variable called sum, and then I wanted to add three plus four. Well, I could have an assignment operator, and then I could do three plus four. And so this is gonna evaluate the seven, and then that seven is gonna be assigned to sum. And so we can see that real quick by doing a C out statement that displays the contents of sum. And if we compile and run that, you'll see that we see the seven on the screen. Okay, so there's sum equals seven. And the rest of the operators are gonna work in a similar way. So maybe I create you know, another variable answer, and this time we're gonna find the difference. So maybe I do something like answer equals three minus four, and then I'll see out you know, the difference, or I'll see out, you know, answer equals, and then do answer, All right? So we can do that. And then we also have, you know, multiplication. So we can do three times four, and then we can display the contents of that. And then we have uh, division, which is forward slash. And we'll see what that looks like here in a second, and that will lead us into talking about um, the different types of division, okay? So let's take a look at that. So you're gonna see that the answer, you know, you can see that the sum is seven as before, three minus four is minus one, and then you got three times four is 12, but three divided by four is zero, okay? And so you look at that, you're like, what are you talking about three divided by four is zero? No, it's not, you didn't divide, you didn't divide zero by anything. No, no, this is because we divided an integer by an integer. So an integer by an integer is an integer. So anytime you have an int divided by an int, you're gonna get an int. So what that means is, is that you're gonna get a whole number and all the decimal places are gonna be truncated. So normally three divided by four, you'd have like zero, think of it like this, you'd have 0 0.75 would be the answer, right? Well, an integer divided by an integer is an integer. So you don't have decimal places. So what are you left with? Zero. So that is an example of integer division, integer division. So if you wanted to have your decimal places, then you need to do floating point division, floating point division. And floating point division is what you get when you divide using floating point numbers. So anything that's not integer divided by an integer, any kind of combination. So let's create another answer here. So we'll do double you know, answer two and we'll assign to answer two 3.0 divided by four, because 3.0 is a floating point number. So a float divided by an integer, a floating point number divided by an integer is gonna give you a floating point number. An integer divided by a floating point number is gonna give you a floating point number. And then of course, a floating point number divided by a floating point number is gonna give you a floating point number. So now when we do see out answer two equals, and then we show you answer two, we're gonna get the actual correct answer which is gonna be, you know, that, that uh, 0.75, right? So there you go, you can see it's 0 0.75. So as long as one of these guys is a floating point number, then you're gonna get the correct answer, right? So if I did an integer divided by a float, I get the correct answer. And of course, if I do floating point number divided by a floating point number, I get the correct answer. It's just when you divide an integer by an integer, you're gonna get an integer, which means that the answer is not gonna have any decimal places. So another example of this would be, you know, what if I did, you know, five divided by four or five divided by two, right? You'd expect that the answer would be 2.5. I mean, you look at the variable, it's a double, so it can hold decimal places, but the right side is evaluated first. So five divided by two, it's not 2.5, it's two. Why? Because those decimal places get truncated. So an integer divided by an integer is an integer. But if I make either one of them or both a floating point number, such as 5.0, then I'm gonna get the correct answer. So that's the difference between 
integer division and floating point division. All right, so the last thing we want to talk about is we want to talk about this modulus operator, modulus. And so the modulus operator is percent. And what this does is it gives you the remainder of integer division. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I was to take, you know, let's make another variable here. Let's do uh, answer three. And this only works with integers, by the way, because with floating point numbers, you know, you don't have remainders. You just get the decimal places, right? So this is only modulus divisions only for integer division. So if I do something like this, answer three equals five modulus two, what am I going to get? Well, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get the remainder of five divided by two. Two divides five twice with one left over. So the answer is going to be one. So we will take a look at that. Answer three equals answer three. And modulus is one of those things that you're going to come across in your computer science education every so often. It's like right now you, you learn about it. So you, you can see that answer three equals one. You learn about it and you're like, oh, well, that's a neat little factoid. And then you never use it again until, you know, these rare times where it crops up. It's, it's useful for doing circular arrays, for example, or for doing things with hash tables and stuff like that. But that's more advanced stuff. And so you'll see it now and you'll be like, oh, well, that's interesting. I can find the remainder. Who cares? And then you won't play with it again for another two years. And then you'll be going back and scrambling to find out, you know, well, how did that thing work again? But it does give you uh, an interesting situation where you could have something like this where, you know, you can find, you know, let's say you wanted to convert your height from inches into feet and inches. So let us say that you had a variable uh, int inches and feet. And so then you start off and you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm 74 inches tall. So you say I'm um, inches equals 74, but you want to change that from 74 inches to, I don't know, five foot, four inches, something like that, right? Feet and inches. Well, then you can use integer division and modulus division to get you your answer. So if you take feet and you assign to that the inches divided by 12, right? What you're going to get is you're going to get the number of feet, right? Because 74 divided by 12 is going to be what, um, six, six point something, right? The thing is we're doing integer division here. So the point something gets dropped. So then you're going to get your six feet. Okay. And then if you take the inches and you take the inches modulus 12, you're going to get that remainder, right? So this is going to find that whole number part, you know, you're going to be dividing 74 by 12 and it's going to tell you how many times 12 divides 74. And then this is going to tell you how much is left over of the dividing of the 74 by 12. Okay. So you get both your answers that way. So this is a practical example of how this works. Okay. So we'll do uh, feet equals feet and then we'll do uh, inches equals inches. And then we'll compile and we'll run that. You know, so that's, that's easy. That's, that's an easy little test question I'll give to students too. So, you know, if you were to convert 74 inches into feet and inches, you'd say, oh yeah, it is six foot uh, two, right? You're six feet and two inches because six times 12, is 72 plus two inches is 74 inches, right? Um, so one last thing before we go, and that is that naturally this is going to work. You know, all of these operators are going to work with variables as well. So I could have something like this. I could have X and then I'll say int X y z and then i'll say y equals um, five and then z equals 12 then we can say x equals y plus c and then we'll see how it x and you know you can use any combination too so you could use a combination of variables and literals so i could just as easily have you know done something like this instead i could have said y plus uh, 15 Right, and I can combine them. So in that case, the contents of y is five, and then that gets added to the 15 that I wrote in as a literal, that evaluates to 20, that gets stored in x, and then we can display that contents of x on the screen. Okay, so now you know the basics of arithmetic and the difference between integer division and floating point division in Z++. Thanks for watching.